did see their debut. Uh, I was really impressed by it. I thought they were great on the microphone. I thought they were just as impressive as wrestling. And I think that with their wrestling and their acting, uh, the resume, how it speaks for itself, they are definitely future uh, tag team champions. And we are looking at right now Anderson and Gallows versus the New Day. And possibly, even though the New Day and the tag team division seems to have been drafted exclusive out of SmackDown, the SmackDown uh, live tag team division deserves its own championships to compete for with how phenomenal a team like uh, American Alpha is looking with Jason Jordan and Chad Gable coming to SmackDown over from NXT the way they have. Who is not impressed uh, by a team like American Alpha? I don't think anyone is not impressed uh, by American Alpha because everybody is keeping that conversation at an all-time high after the debut of American Alpha. I have commented on debuts the likes of American Alpha and Nia Jax for both Raw and SmackDown and the NXT draft picks for Raw and SmackDown. And recent call-ups that I've written up for my website, you got to check those out. They are a fantastic read, and it gives you a lot of insight into how I feel about the draft choices of Nia Jax and American Alpha. I'm looking forward to very promising and probable futures uh, for some of these draft picks that have been highlighted in the fallout of the 2016 WWE Draft. Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar, along with all the other huge success for Ron Spector. Of course, this is the first interpromotional contest that we're going to be seeing. Uh, between both shows, Randy Orton shows up on Raw whenever he wants to. Brock Lesnar shows up on SmackDown whenever he wants to. Brock Lesnar's on Raw. Randy Orton's on SmackDown. Really appreciate this, and I think this is going to be the first of many interpromotional contests that we will see. My prediction for this match always has been Randy Orton. I'm going to stay with that uh, because I can't see Randy Orton coming back after nine months of absence. Everything that's befallen Randy Orton has happened for him and losing to Brock Lesnar, although I wouldn't be shocked one bit if we saw Randy Orton lose out of Brock Lesnar, given the rare amount of times that we see Brock Lesnar wrestle every year on average three or four times a year. So I'm going to go with Randy Orton on this match. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if Brock Lesnar won this match. But also phenomenal promo work from Paul Heyman showing up on Raw and SmackDown saying the way it is uh, when it comes to Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. 14, 15 years in the making. They both came in in 2002. They've been there ever since. Brock Lesnar went away for a little while to conquer the UFC in football. He did just that. He came back out of professional wrestling eight years after he left, and he's been dominating more so than he ever has before, so this could go either way. Really proud of having seen everything that we have in the fall of the draft between Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar, the first interpromotional contest of many that we are going to be seeing. Really excited about that. The Undertaker now being drafted, though, out of either Raw or SmackDown. Obviously, that means The Undertaker's only going to be wrestling probably once or twice a year, he's going to show up on whatever show he's feuding with a wrestler from. Obviously, he's going to show up whenever he wants to, so he's not exclusive on either show. Brock Lesnar being drafted exclusive to Raw. Obviously, we haven't seen the last of either uh, Brock Lesnar or Randy Orton. We're probably going to be seeing more of Randy Orton, obviously, than we are going to be seeing of Brock Lesnar. But we haven't seen the last of Brock Lesnar feuding with anyone on Monday Night Raw. Be that he's exclusive to Monday Night Raw, the live show, the three-hour live show, that was to be expected. Uh, but we can also expect to see more robberies for Brock Lesnar and probably far more creative things happening for Lesnar in the very near future. Wouldn't be surprised on if we did see something like that. We're also going to be seeing a shakeup between the general managers also, if not a feud uh, between Daniel Bryan and Mick Foley. We're going to be seeing new Raw general managers, new SmackDown general managers coming in from time to time and a lot of brand confliction, possibly draft lotteries. There are a lot of things uh, that could be happening in the future, and we have a reason to be excited as wrestling fans. If there ever was a time to be a fan of professional wrestling, that time is obviously now and very apparent. It's become very apparent to me uh, what's been happening in the fallout of the 2016 WWE Draft, all the draft choices, how it was familiar from 14 years ago between Ric Flair and Vince McMahon and how Shane and Stephanie uh, were making simultaneous draft picks and how the Intercontinental and U.S. champions were drafted together. Uh, big names like Randy Orton and John Cena were drafted together. Uh, it was just awesome seeing it all. And a lot of people also have this concern about John Cena on SmackDown, be it that he's in feuds now uh, with the likes of AJ Styles. And a lot of people say that because John Cena is mainstream, we're not going to be seeing much of John Cena in the future. Uh, when it comes to WWE, of course, with prior commitments to entertainment and how he's gone mainstream now, John Cena saying promising that he's not going anywhere uh, anytime soon. I believe John Cena when he says he's not going anywhere anytime soon because of his popularity. He has an overwhelming amount of popularity, and because of his response, I don't see John Cena going anywhere anytime soon. I see names like Roman Reigns and Randy Orton going somewhere before I ever see John Cena leaving WWE. He knows uh, the WWE put him in the position that he's in, gave him this opportunity to be as big of a name as what he is. 
Uh, so I don't see John Cena turning his back on wrestling fans anytime soon. If anything, we're going to be seeing more of John Cena on Raw and SmackDown. We're probably going to be seeing more of John Cena doing interpromotional work uh, with WWE than we are anyone. I think Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar is awesome, but I think that John Cena will probably be doing more interpromotional work than uh, both Brock Lesnar and Randy Orton are doing right now. So we haven't seen the last of John Cena. Now, I've been somewhat of a John Cena critic for years, but even though I've been a John Cena critic, that doesn't mean that I utterly hate and can't stand John Cena, because I really appreciate what John Cena does uh, for charitable organizations like Make-A-Wish and so on. So I think that we haven't seen uh, the last of John Cena, and that can be said by me and millions of other people who do these video blogs and do these columns uh, with 100% confidence. We haven't seen the last of John Cena, and we're going to be seeing more feuds, more so than just John Cena versus AJ Styles all the time, because I know... A lot of people from reading columns and hearing what your opinions have been are really tired, growing really tired really fast of seeing John Cena and Randy Orton happening all the time. Also, I'd like to see more dream matches with these interpromotional concepts, of course, like Randy Orton and Brock Lesnar. I want to see more matches with different individuals being involved in it. Probably matches like Brock Lesnar versus Batista, The Rock versus The Undertaker, John Cena. Uh, versus the Undertaker, there was so much of an opportunity to create. I hope WWE takes advantage of having more dream matches and more interpromotional contests and concepts. Uh, the split brand tape reviews, the first will be Backlash on September 11th. SmackDown will get their first try and the first hand of doing a split brand tape review. And I think uh, we're going to be seeing, as of right now, two pay-per-views a month. One split brand and pay-per-view and one pay-per-view a month where both shows uh, will come together. That would be very different if it happens. And if we see one month, of course, SmackDown goes. And the next month, the follow-up, Raw will go. That would be very different. Seeing Universal and WWE main events for the championship, that would be awesome. We're going to be seeing, seeing more split-branded tours. And NXT is going to be touring more as a brand extension as well. So that's going to be awesome. So much happening. Uh, the complexity obviously has changed, and you can feel pretty confident. I feel pretty confident. I don't know about you, uh, but you can feel pretty confident in the thought of the draft this year in some way of a final thought and reaction uh, because of everything that's happened. Obviously, times have changed with professional wrestling, as we and we as fans have to accept terms of how times have changed and hope that uh, times have changed for the better. I hope that times have changed for the better. I know. Uh, that times have changed for the better with professional wrestling, and I hope that everybody else has that same amount of confidence uh, carried over from the fall of the 2016 WWE draft. Obviously, it's not as good of a draft from 14, 15 years ago that we saw. Of course, 14, 15 years ago, you had the names there. You had the star power to be drafted out of both Raw and SmackDown. But what's different about the 2016 draft 14, 15 years later is you have NXT there, you don't have ECW anymore, and you have a phenomenal roster of talent that will come over uh, from Ron's to Ron SmackDown all the time from NXT. That will go a long way in benefiting it and changing it. So you have different concepts, but it's not the star power. I think I know that's where uh, the frustration always has lied uh, with wrestling fans. You know, you don't have the star power like in 2002 when you had The Rock, The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, and so on that could have been drafted. Uh, between both shows, you don't have legends like Vince McMahon and Ric Flair calling the shots all the time. But hey, we will always see Vince McMahon and Triple H showing up uh, all the time, making these decisions. And you had better believe that if we have not seen the last of anyone, if we haven't seen the last of Triple H, he will factor in there somehow, even more so now with the return of Seth Rollins having recently happened in the fallout of WrestleMania 32 this year. So much is going to be happening. We haven't seen the last of Triple H, nor have we seen the last of John Cena. And I think the times have changed, obviously, for the better. So you can feel at least 100%, 95%, if not 100% confident in the fallout of the 2016 WWE Draft. We have our reasons to be excited as wrestling fans. And I think that, uh, you know, I'm not the only one who's excited about all of this. So if you have a thought on the fall of the 2016 WWE draft, you can, by all means, get in on the conversation on social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google Plus at facebook.com slash Entertainment, twitter.com slash jonathanclark1, youtube.com slash jonathanclark22, and Google Plus at Entertainment. if you've got a thought on the fallout of the 2016 WWE draft. I would love to know what that opinion is in the way of a reaction. I'm your host, Jonathan Clark, and I will talk to you again next week. It's been a whole lot of fun. The time from NXT, that will go a long way in benefiting it and changing it. So you have different concepts, but it's not the star power. I think I know that's where uh, the frustration always has lied 
uh, with wrestling fans, you know, you don't have the star power like in 2002 when you had The Rock, The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, and so on that could have been drafted uh, between both shows. You don't have legends like Vince McMahon and Ric Flair calling the shots all the time. But hey, we will always see Vince McMahon and Triple H showing up uh, all the time, making these decisions. And you had better believe that if we have not seen the last of anyone, we haven't seen the last of Triple H, he will factor in there. Somehow, even more so now, with the return of Seth Rollins having recently happened in the fallout of WrestleMania 32 this year, so much is going to be happening. We haven't seen the last of Triple H, nor have we seen the last of John Cena, and I think times have changed, obviously, for the better, so you can feel at least 100%, 95%, if not 100% confident in the fallout of the 2016 WWE Draft. We have our reasons to be excited. As wrestling fans, and I think that, uh, you know, I'm not the only one who's excited about all of this. So if you have a thought on the fall of the 2016 WWE draft, you can, by all means, get in on the conversation on social media sites like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google Plus at Facebook.com slash HEW Entertainment, Twitter.com slash Jonathan Clark 1, YouTube.com slash Jonathan Clark 22, and Google Plus at HEW Entertainment if you've got a thought on the fallout. Of the 2016 WWE Draft. I would love to know what that opinion is in the way of a reaction. I'm your host, Jonathan Clark, and I will talk to you again next week. It's been a whole lot of fun. HEW Entertainment Radio is a production of HEW Entertainment on their official website and broadcasts on social media. You can join the conversation on our Facebook page at HEW Entertainment. Follow and listen to our show on Twitter at Jonathan Clark one And watch us on our YouTube channel at Jonathan Clark 22 Hosted and produced by Jonathan Clark out of Canada. If you have any questions on our radio broadcast, you can email us at JonathanClark2005 at Hotmail.com. Thank you for listening.